Hello, welcome to Pandora's Box. Today I will rank the top 10 most beautiful cards from the Japanese Mystica Archives according to concept and quality of illustration. I have a separate top 10 list for the standard set and the English Mystica Archives. And these cards are so amazing that they deserve top 10 lists right all to themselves. I do consider this Japanese Mystica Archive to be the best one out of the three. And here is my top 10 list of the most beautiful cards in the Japanese Mystica Archives. So first, at number 10, I have Woven Denial by Ayogacho. This Japanese mystical archive has opened my eyes right to a new style and subset of art that I myself has never paid much attention to before in the past. And ignore the fact that this is a waifu and focus your eyes right on how the artist uses colours and curves to construct this amazing piece of art. And number 9 is Time Warp by Shie Nanahara. Seriously, it's not always about the waifus. This might look like another waifu, but I want to bring your attention to the magnificent beauty that is this piece of art. Spoilers, okay, the number one most beautiful, beautiful card right in the English Mystical Archives is Time Warp. But I think this Time Warp, even at number 9, right, is already more beautiful than that English Time Warp, hands down. I'm not comparing waifus, huh? it is artwork, guys. And number 8 is Cards of Fate by Kota Nakashubo. This is the first card on the list that's closer to traditional Japanese art. You know, art is always evolving. And today's anime is probably the evolution of traditional Japanese art from many, many decades. And luckily, evolution doesn't mean that it's lost. And I'm super lucky to be able to experience it in such a form here. Moving on to number 7, I have This Park by Kiritada. This is another of the hybrid traditional and modern Japanese art. Immediately, right, this is already my favourite version of Nicole Bolas. I love the interpretation of the Undead Army summoned by my favourite Liliana. And Mr. Bolas here also wins the best monsters of the Japanese Mr. Ga Archives Award. And number 6, I have Tainted Pack by Yusuke Katekari. What the hell is going on with this piece of art? There's an obvious Buddhist undertone, but why is Buddha depicted as a skeleton? And why are they underwater? I have so many questions and this is so trippy. But I'm super happy to see more Asian religious themes right, being assimilated into pop culture. And I do need more of this, please. And number 5, I have Village Rights by Hagia Kaoru. This is another really surreal art that informs us about Japanese culture and customs. Sometimes, I wonder myself what qualifies me to appraise this artwork that artists have spent their lifetime honing their craft for. I am not a trained artist and I can't draw or paint to save my life. But then, the more I think about it, I realise I'm a 40-year-old jobless virgin collecting Pokemon and waifus printed on tiny cardboard rectangles. Hell, yeah, I'm qualified! Moving on to number 4, I have Tendrils of Agony by Darken. I don't think this is what the artist meant, but my eyes see a sexy waifu being undressed and violated by tentacles. I mean, it's, it's actually just crows, but my mind sees hentai. Do I need help? Oh yes, this is by default the winner of the best waifu in the Japanese Mystica Archives Award. Then at number 3, I have Divine Gambit by Kiritada. Dragons are overrepresented in pop culture nowadays, but this is still so majestic and breathtaking. And this is what my PP feels like after seeing the tentacle hentai on the last card. And finally, number 2, I have Defiance Strike by Amaya Gido. I love the way the water is depicted here. I don't know whether this is an actual painting or digital art, but it would be mind-blowing if this was actually a painting itself. It looks like it's painted on an unbleached scroll, which adds to the allure of it being a traditional Japanese painting. This looks like an uh, ima kimono, and my uneducated guess is that this ima kimono is reminiscence of paintings done during Japan's feudal period. This is a very, very strong number two. Before I review the number one card of the Japanese mystical archives, let's look at some honorable mentions. The Japanese mystical archives are so beautiful that even the number one most beautiful cards of most TCG sets, right, will not even have a chance to break the honorable mentions here. This honorable mention list will be slightly longer than usual to accommodate all the deserving cards. My first honourable mention is Ephemerate by Yumiko. This is another stunning waifu, but I'm not sure if she is a ghost or a human because of the way that the hair is floating in the air. <laughs> and if she really is a ghost, then I say, come, come, come and haunt me. 
The second honourable mention is Strategic Planning by Hattori Kyoka. Uh, uh, my, my mind can, cannot comprehend. Must re restart. The next honourable mention is Putrify by Magani Okuda. I love the depiction of a milf waifu casting a life ending curse on another man. The next honourable mention is Day of Judgment by Maiko Yoshizawa. What does this picture even represent? So trippy, so surreal, but it's so pretty. The next honourable mention is Compulsive Research by Tomohito. I don't really have a good eye for this, but I guess this mimics the Yukioi style. Not Yu-Gi-Oh, the TCG Yu-Gi-Oh, but Yukioi. My last honourable mention is Mind's Desire by Yaya. I will let no beautiful waifu slip from my grasp, and this waifu is no exception. <laughs> Before I review the number one card for Japanese mystical archives, please remember to like and subscribe to Pandora's box and turn on the notification button. I post new videos daily, so please remember to check back for more content like this. The number one most beautiful card in the Japanese mystical archives is Demonic Tutor by Sumi Okazu. At its core, this card is just a series of brush strokes using only black and red ink. There's no worries about mixing of colours and shading and all that yada yada when painting in oil or acrylic. And moreover, I guess that this piece of art took at most 15 minutes right, for the artist to complete from start to finish. But herein lies the profound secret that makes me greatly appreciate this piece of art. To be able to come to this level to create this piece of art in 15 minutes, it probably took the artist more than 15 years of training and dedication to honing his or her craft. We are looking at years and years of knowledge and experience, right, accumulated in one card. And this is why the simple looking demonic tutor is the most beautiful card of the Japanese mystical archives in Strixhaven. This is my list for the top 10 most beautiful cards in the Japanese mystical archives. This is the best set that I've ever seen from any TCG. I feel that matches lead right over any other TCGs is almost insurmountable at present. Okay, yes, <laughs> I know that Pokemon is much bigger, but I'm just trying to make a point here. Anyway, uh, let me know if you agree with me, and if you like what you see, please visit my channel for more box openings, set reviews, top 10s, and content created for nerds in general. i see you in the next video. Bye-bye!